This is the review of the weight volume problem from your midterm exam. Here's the text of the problem. If you don't remember the problem very well, now would be a good time to pause the recording and reread the problem statement. A key concept you need to understand in order to solve this problem correctly is that there's actually two different samples in this problem. The first sample is the cylindrical soil sample, the undisturbed sample that was taken out of the ground. Uh, we know that both the uh, diameter of that sample, the height of that sample, uh, the weight of the sample with the, uh, uh, the sampler and the empty weight of the sampler. The second uh, sample is actually a specimen removed from the cylindrical sample. This is the sample, uh, the water content sample, which is the sample we're going to use to determine the water content. The data for this sample is highlighted in blue. It's very important that you understand that these two samples are, are, are separate and different from one another. We need the information from both of them to solve the problem, but you can't mix up the data from the two different samples. A number of you had that problem with the exam, and, and that's definitely a way to get the wrong answer for the question. So, now let's consider um, this cylindrical sample, this undisturbed sample that was taken out of the ground. It has a cylindrical shape. Uh, it has an inside diameter of 2.5 inches, and it's 6 inches tall. Uh, with this information, uh, we can easily determine the total volume of the sample. It's simply going to be the diameter of the sample squared times pi, uh, divided by 4 times the height of the sample, which is 6 inches. Uh, we put those numbers in our calculator and we'll find out that the uh, volume of the sample is 29.5 cubic inches, or if we convert that to cubic feet, it's 0 0.017 uh, cubic feet. We're also able to, to, to determine the total weight of the sample from this uh, 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 sample. Um, we know that the weight of the sample uh, plus the, uh, the soil in the sample plus the sampler was 2.21 pounds. We also know that the weight of the empty sampler was 0 0.39 pounds, so if we subtract those two numbers, we'll get the weight of the sample itself, that is the weight of the soil in the sampler, and that's 1.82 pounds. So now we know the total volume and the total weight of the sample. Now that we have this information, uh, we're going to need to also know the water content of the soil in order to calculate all the other parameters you want, the void ratio, the porosity, etc. Uh, so we're going to need to determine the water content. To do that, we're going to take a separate specimen out of the cylindrical sample. We're going to take a small amount of the soil in the cylindrical sample, and we're going to put that in a separate container, and that's going to be our water content sample. So let's uh, look at our water content sample. Here it is. It's a smaller sample that we took out of the cylindrical sample, and it's in a different sample container. Now, the first thing we're going to do is determine the mass of that sample. Uh, uh, we're going to determine the mass of the container and the mo moist soil in the container by just putting it on the, on the scale and measuring it, and that turns out to be 87.68 grams. Uh, then we're going to take that entire sample and the container and stick it in the oven and leave it in the oven overnight, and it's going to dry out. And the next morning, uh, after it's dried out, we'll pull it out of the oven, we'll stick it back on the uh, scale, and we'll now determine the mass of the container and the dry soil, and that'll be 72.37 uh, grams. Another uh, quantity we're going to need to know in order to uh, determine the water content is the mass of the empty container, and presumably we've measured that at the beginning of this uh, uh, test before we uh, took our sample. It's normally the way it's done. And we know that the mass of the empty container is 15.66 grams. So now with these uh, three quantities, we can determine the water content of the sample. We know that the water content is simply equal to the weight of the water divided by the weight of the solids. So uh, uh, the way we're going to calculate that in the numerator, uh, we're going to subtract... Uh, from the mass of the container and the moist soil, the mass of the container and the dry soil. So the only difference between those two numbers is going to be the mass of the water that was evaporated when we put it in the oven, so that'll be uh, the mass of the water on the top. And we're going to divide that uh, by the mass of the container with dry soil in it, uh, subtracted from that the mass of the empty container, and that'll simply be the mass of the solid material, and the ratio of those two quantities will be the water content. Now, it shouldn't bother you that I'm using masses, in this case, instead of weights, because the only difference between the mass and the weight is uh, multiplying either by the um, uh, acceleration of gravity, and since this is a ratio, uh, if I had the acceleration of gravity on the top and on the bottom, it'll be the same, so it doesn't really matter whether I'm using uh, mass or uh, weight, and normally we use uh, uh, mass and measure these things in grams in the laboratory, so I'm using grams now. 
So now I have the ratio of the of the weight of the of, or or the mass of the uh, water to the mass of the solids, and if I divide that through, I'll find out that it's 0 0.27, or the water content is 27 percent. So now I have the total weight of the sample, I have the total volume of the sample, I got those from the cylindrical sample, and I know the water content of the sample, so I'm ready to fill out my three-phase diagram. So here's my three-phase diagram. I have solids, water, and air. I'm going to put the weights on the left in pounds, and I'm going to put the volumes on the right in cubic feet, because when I'm done, I want to know the unit weights in pounds per cubic foot. So I know that the total weight of the sample was 1.82 pounds, and I know the total volume of the sample was 0 0.71 cubic feet. We got those from the cylindrical sample. Now the 0 0.071's got a lot of digits in it, so and it's going to take up a lot of space on my slide, so I'm going to rewrite that as 17 times 10 to the minus 3 cubic feet. I'm going to put the 10 to the minus 3 at the top just to uh, save space. So that's just to save space on the slide. So the first thing we're going to do is to calculate... Um, the weight of the solid material, and we're going to do that because we know the water content is 27 percent, and we know that the weight of the solids is equal to the total weight divided by the quantity 1 plus the water content. So we have all those quantities we need to know. So the total weight is 1.82 pounds. 1 plus the water content is 1 plus, 0, 1 plus 0 0.27. We have to use the decimal form of the water content. And if I uh, punch those numbers in my calculator, I'll find that there's 1.43 pounds of solid material in the sample, so I'll put that in the appropriate place uh, in the three-phase diagram. And then I'm going to determine the weight of the water simply by subtracting 1.43 from 1.82, uh, and I'll have the weight of the water, and that's 0 0.39 pounds. So now the weight side's filled out, and we need to compute the volume side of the three-phase diagram. And we get from the weight side to the volume side by using unit weights. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to start with the solid material. We know that the volume of the solid material is equal to the weight of the solid material divided by the specific gravity times the unit weight of water. So that will be 1.43 pounds divided by 2.69. That's the specific gravity of the solid material. We got that from the input from the problem. And we multiply that by 62.4, which is the uh, unit weight of water in pounds per cubic foot, and that should give us the volume uh, of the solids in cubic feet. So that turns out to be 8.53 times 10 to the minus 3. I'll write that in my three-phase diagram. And we do the same thing, a similar thing with the water. We, the volume of water is equal to the weight of the water divided by gamma water. So that's equal to 0 0.39 pounds divided by 62.4 pounds. And that's going to turn out uh, to be 6.2 uh, cubic feet, 6.2 times 10 to the minus 3 cubic feet. And then to determine the volume of the air, I just subtract the 6.2 plus 8.53 from 17, and I find out there's 2.27 uh, times 10 to the minus 3 cubic feet of air in the sample. So now my three-phase diagram is complete. I have all the quantities on it, and we're ready to go calculate those things we were really looking for in the first place. So here is my three-phase diagram. I'm just copying it from the previous slide. It's all filled out, and the first thing we're going to calculate now is the void ratio. And remember that the void ratio is the uh, volume of the voids, so I have to add up the volume of the water and volume of the air, and that's going to turn out to be 8.47. Uh, and I'm going to divide that by the volume of the solids. For the void ratio is the ratio of the volume of the voids to the volume of the solids. Uh, and if I divide those two numbers out into two significant figures, that's going to turn out to be 1.0. Um, and the next thing we're going to do is calculate the porosity. Now the porosity uh, has the same numerator, the volume of the voids, but the denominator, denominator in the porosity is the total volume of the sample. That's 17. I divide those two out and to two significant figures, that's going to be 50%. Now those two numbers should make sense. If the void ratio is 1, that means I have an equal volume of, vol of uh, voids uh, to the volume of solids. Uh, and that would mean that the volume of voids to the total volume would be 1 over 2, which is 1 half or 50 percent. Next, we're going to calculate uh, the degree of saturation. The degree of saturation is simply the volume of the void space that's filled up with water, or the volume of water, divided by the total void space, so that's 6.2 divided by 8.47, and that will turn out to be 73 percent. So our degree of saturation is 73 percent. 
Now you notice when doing these calculations, I left the 10 to the minus 3 off since uh, when I was doing all these calculations, because these are all ratios, and the 10 to the minus 3 would be on the top and the bottom, and it'd cancel out, so I just didn't bother to do that. However, for the next um, part of this problem, we're going to have to be sure to get the units right and include that in there, because the next thing we're going to do is calculate the unit weights. And we know that the total unit weight is equal to the total weight, 1.82 pounds, divided by the total volume, which is 17 times 10 to the minus 3. I have to get the, that in there to get the units correct now. And if I run those numbers out, I'll find out that I have a unit, total unit weight of 107 pounds per cubic foot. Uh, next, we're going to calculate the uh, dry unit weight. Now, remember, the dry unit weight is just a theoretical number. It's 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 this uh, weight. Uh, it's the unit weight of the soil. If we could magically remove all the water without um, uh, it the soil the, the sample shrinking or anything like that, so it's just a theoretical number, but it's equal to the weight of the solids, 1.43 pounds, divided by the total volume of the uh, sample, uh, 17 times 10 to the minus 3. We run those out and we find out that the dry unit weight is 84 pounds per cubic foot. So now I finished the problem. I've, I've calculated all the quantities that I was asked for, the void ratio, the porosity, the degree of saturation, and the dry unit weight and the total unit weight. Before we finish, I think it's really important to go over a couple key concepts that you need to uh, know to solve these kind of problems. The first one is realize in these problems that there are actually two different samples. The one sample is the complete undisturbed cylindrical sample that we got out of the ground, and the second one is a smaller water content specimen, which we took out of the cylindrical sample, but it's a separate sample. And you need to understand those two are, are, are separate and, and use their numbers appropriately to do the problem. The second thing I think it's really important is to understand how valuable a three-phase diagram is. Many of you tried to solve this problem directly using the equations that you had in your equation sheets, and, and, and many of you did that didn't do it right because you put wrong numbers in certain places because they were just equations and you were just looking for weights and you just stuck some weights in there. Um, I think it's very, very difficult uh, to understand these problems by simply using equations. I think it's much easier to understand the problems and much easier to do them correctly if you make a three-phase diagram first. So. The way to approach these problems is to draw a three-phase diagram, and you, then you'll understand the problems. And then, once you've got the three-phase diagram filled out, it's very easy to just calculate the other quantities that you want. I hope this was helpful, and I hope it helped you learn this material. Thanks a lot.